Morning. Um, I was here last year, and we start to have the first session of sustainability. And what I'm going to provide you today, it's a quick update, and I will also take the reference of what we have done compared to last year. Today, we're looking at sustainability and look at what are the challenges we want to address. Because if you talk to many different people about what sustainability is, Everyone will come with different ideas, different things, and, and let's try in this presentation to focus on really what is common across all customers. If you look at what we try to do with sustainability, of course, yes, to save the planet, but that's very large and, um, and, and good goal, but, but that's, uh, we need to be more practical to that one. When I talked to different service providers, they told me, Yes, what I want the most first is to reduce my energy costs. And you will see in the next slides that um, and there, there is a big reason to that. The second one, which is, I believe, also super important, it's to match with the net zero carbon strategy and the roadmap of the company. And why this? Because first, a lot of companies committed to address the net zero carbon strategy. And on top of that one, a lot of bank and the financial company did that too. Meaning that if your enterprise, being service provider, being an enterprise, classical enterprise, wants to get funding from a bank, today they will have, they must have a net zero carbon strategy in the company to loan money to the bank. Otherwise the bank will not loan you money anymore or will loan you money with huge rate and with such very bad condition. And those are, to me, the two major reasons why we need to take care of sustainability today. Energy cost reduction and energy cost consumption reduction and to be able to address the net zero carbon uh, uh, journey. Regarding the electricity cost, I think that slide is explicit. Um, if you look at the wholesale electricity cost in Europe, in Asia, um, in perhaps, I don't know for Sweden, but at least for Europe and UK, um, he has read the, uh, I mean, the, the cost has, has been multiplied by 700 at some point during the Ukraine war, the beginning of the Ukraine war, and now it's at 300% compared to what it used to be before. That means your PEX has increased a lot, and that is not acceptable because this is it's increasing your OPEX so much. I mean, I was reading an article not too far ago saying that of the entire energy produced in UK, BT consume one percent of it. Then, if you could reduce that one percent to another percent, we will save a lot of energy and reduce the cost for BT as an example. The second reason, it's like I mentioned, everybody has an agenda for net zero carbon. Really, it's about the carbon, not about anything else here. Not about the energy, but the carbon. And um, if you look at a little bit detail what net zero carbon strategy is globally, it's divided in three scopes, scope one, scope two, scope three. What matters to us, it's mostly the scope two and the scope three. Scope two, it's about make sure that the energy that we provide, that we generate, it's carbon free. Then that goes back a little bit to what I've explained before. Because if we reduce our energy consumption, it will be easier to buy energy that perhaps a little bit more expensive, um, but that are carbon free. And then in the long run, and almost all enterprise, all banks, all, all service provider, have an agenda for 2030, 2030, which is about making sure that we also address net zero carbon from the production to the end of life of any product, service, etc. This is more complex because now you have to look at the carbon consumption from manufacturing, transport, up to the end of life of the product. 
this is really what I've brought up to now, what's really the two main reasons why we're looking at sustainability and specifically in the world of service provider, but I think globally in many enterprises as well. What is our execution? What Cisco is doing about it? First, and the most important, it's what we do at, with our equipment. With our equipment, we look at the hardware, and that's many years of work already, and we continue, and we try to improve our hardware by developing new chipsets, by implementing and optimizing Lancard, the fabric card, by coming with new architecture that Guru was alluded to, la like grande rooted optical architecture, and also trying to optimize our PSU, our fan power supply unit, and fans. On top of that, our network operating system that could be iOS XR, NexOS, and so on, we try also to take the advantage of that and to provide better consumption from a software point of view. Uh, with the power saving mode that we have introduced recently, the telemetry that it requires for automation and, and monitoring of, of uh, the energy, um, etc. cetera. Um, and, and we really have that in the agenda. I'm not going to go into details today. There will be more session after. That will go through that one. And then on the automation side, of course, we need to plan the network with that in goal. We need to operate the network with that in goal. We need to look at the logistic with that in, as a goal as well. OK. This is really what we are trying to do and we are doing uh, for the last few, I would say, two, three years, and perhaps more. And we really have a strong um, priority in addressing this within the company. But let's look at the bigger picture. Let's look at not just what Cisco deliver, but also how this is operate from a service provider point of view. If you look at how it operates, you need to look at the big picture, meaning how much energy do I spend to operate those equipment? And we have something that is frequently used in the data center called the power usage efficiency. What it is, we are looking at how much power get in the data center and how much power get utilized by the equipment. And the rest, it's used, consumed by the distribution of the energy and by the air, um, air cooling and those type of functionality. Now, if you look at, I will take an example in Europe, the company of AH and T-Loop is doing the same, and they will be the next after me. Um, what they do, they operate data center with liquid cooling. And what gives them, they do have a PUE of 1.25, meaning that for every single watt consumed by the server, they're consuming 250 milliwatt for the distribution and the cooling, which is very low. If you look at the service provider facility or street cabinet or whatever data center that you have in general in service provider, the PUE is about 2.0 up to 3.0, meaning for every single watt that is consumed by the IT equipment or, or router, you consume two more watts uh, to distribute it and, 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 and to cool it. And the main reason is a lot of those facilities are still powered with 48 volts, or minus 48 volts. And that's super inefficient, because when you have minus 48 volts, you have the inverter, the rectifier, the cable, which are all losing power to distribute the power. The second problem with that is that you are limited in the number of power you could deliver per rack. You're limited to 4.8 kilowatts in general. You could not deliver more because that's already a 100 amps cable, which is a cable that is that big, as big as my thumb. 
And for all of those reasons, then this is super inefficient. For all of those reasons, because it's limited to 4.8 kilowatt, and today, in a single rack unit, you could consume that energy, you basically have a real estate problem as well, because now you have in one rack, one device that is one rack unit, and then you could not plug anything else in that rack. Everything is empty. And then you have another rack with one rack unit equipment. And that's a big problem too. Then what is the solution? The solution is to move to much higher voltage solution, like 380 volt DC. But for that one, you need perhaps some other technique, which I'm going to talk about next. To address that, because the problem with 380 volt DC, it's about providing security, safety for the user. I mean, it's not the same thing operating at 48 volt compared to operating at 380 volt. And that's why you have a new technology emerging called fault managed, fault managed power, which is to be able to in inject some data information into your power cable to detect when there is a short circuit or a shock or any things that has to do with safety. And by doing this, by integrating the digital electricity, if you like, inside the power cable, we could now provide the same set of safety as you do with 48 volt, but running at 380 volt or 600 volt if you want to. And that's, an, oh, that's emerging technology. Cisco is uh, looking at that one because we do believe that, at least for data center and for facility in the service provider, this is a good option to increase the voltage and then the power per rack, reduce the amount of um, the size, the section of the, uh, of, of the copper that, that you need to distribute this electricity. I think it's time to look at together how we could move forward to do a better distribution of the power. The second problem is that, assuming now I deliver 40 kilowatt per rack instead of five kilowatt per rack, the second problem will be, oh, but now I need to cool 40 kilowatt, not five kilowatt anymore. And for this, I think there will be no miracle. For this, we will have to use liquid cooling to address that one. We will have to basically reduce the heat of those equipment with liquid. And then you have two technologies, one which is on-ship liquid cooling, which is what we are seeing today with OVH, with, 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 with others like T-Loop. Moving forward, we are already looking at immersion-based liquid cooling, meaning that I take the entire box and plug and, and, and cool the entire box into a kind of bat. And I believe that's the future, but we're working this. And um, yeah, if you're interested to learn more, contact me later. Um, it's an interesting journey. Moving forward, it's for the net scope, um, the net zero scope three, um, we also have to address what we call the PCF, the product carbon footprint. We will have to know for each of the equipment how much carbon I generate to manufacture, to transport, to package, to run, and to end the life of a product, because I want to integrate that into my scope three vision. For that one, there are some standards emerging called ISO 14040. Cisco is fully compliant with that one. We're working in addressing that. If you ask the PCF for a product that, is, that we are delivering, we can deliver those information for the manufacturing, for the transport, for the packaging, and also for the end of life. Um, this is a journey that we start two years ago. Um, now we are capable of delivering the PCF for every product, and we also address what we call the LCA, which is even bigger analysis. Here we're not looking at the carbon only, but we're looking at every single material that it's consumed in the box. 
for example, the copper, the cobalt, the whatever. Um, and, and we are doing an analysis of how much of each of the product, of each of the material it's used by the product. And we already have some analysis for two lines of product, um, at least the one that we are responsible for, uh, which is the 540 and the 8000. Um, again, product carbon footprint, it's something that we're looking at. It's something that we have already. If you ask us or if you get ask your service uh, um, uh, system, system engineer, what is the carbon footprint for my product? It could give you this answer going back to our team and we will be able to deliver those information. In summary, in summary, we started the journey many years ago. We started the journey by looking at how we could optimize the equipment, the network, and the automation of the network to basically reduce the consumption as much as we can. And we will continue. We have a roadmap, we have a software, we have a halfway roadmap to continue to deliver and to optimize the power consumption. But having said that, it's good. We are doing our job. But having said that, if, you, if we don't look at the big picture, if we don't look at how much energy gets spent by the facility, we could perhaps reduce 10% in our side, but if you consume 200 times those 10 person, I think we're going to be a very little player in terms of saving. Then that's why we start to look at the big picture. We start to look at could we um, build facility, could we build data center running at 380 volt? Could we uh, start to look at liquid cooling as one way to move forward? And that is, to me, very important. We also start to look at providing information about every product carbon footprint. That is something that, if you ask any SEs, they could go back to my team, and we can provide this information for every of our product. And then, this is really what all three subjects, this is really what we are after for the coming years. And uh, in the next set of presentation, you will have our guest, T-Loop, which are going to explain what they do here in Sweden. Then you're going to have Eric that is going to explain you how we are using our automation tools to basically allow to optimize the power consumption. And yep, if you have any question, I will be more than happy to answer. I still have a few minutes. Then I would suggest that we move. And I will int introduce uh, T-Loop, which is going to give us an update of what they do here in Sweden. Thank you.